Hello, this is Father Michael from St. Mary's Parish. Tomorrow I'll be starting a series on art and faith. Each day I will present a holy image from the Church of St. Mary, and I will speak briefly about it. Uh, these talks are meant for people of all ages, adults and children, because Jesus said we must all become children to enter the kingdom of God. Before we go any further, though, let me just say something about images and sacred art. Images are tricky business. Some religions forbid them. The Old Testament prohibits strongly the worship of graven images. Civil wars have taken place within the church because of holy images. Pagan and animist religions actually worship images or created material. Some religions, for example, worship the sun in the sky rather than the one who made the sun. The city of Boston and Massachusetts Colony were founded by the Puritans who were against images and who only allowed a cross in their churches and meeting houses. And some people think that we Catholics worship images. We don't. We worship God alone. We do venerate images and sacred art. We respect them and treat them differently than other materials because they are blessed. Blessed means to be set apart for something. And therefore they are dedicated for divine praise and honor alone, for God's benefit and glory and not for ours. To misuse a holy image is to desecrate and show dishonor to the one that they are meant to honor and bring honor to. We also honor and respect holy images, just as we honor and respect our own bodies and every human being, no matter what their religion is or whether they have no religion, because every human being is made in the image and likeness of God who is invisible. God is spirit. But this God who is spirit became flesh, became physical, became matter, became material. St. John Damascene, a brilliant and holy man of the seventh century, you can look him up and you can read his works. It's easy to read, but they tell us a lot about God. He teaches that the whole creation of the visible world was made for one purpose, as a gift given to us to discover the God who is invisible. And through that, to discover that this God is love. The created world reflects the creator. Beauty leads to the truth. The passing world leads to the eternal. The material leads to the spiritual. Revelation also tells us that the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, became a person. That's how much he loves you, that he became a person just like you. God entered the material and physical world in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, who lived and died 2,000 years ago. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. St. John wrote in the beginning of his story about Jesus the fourth gospel. Because of this mystery, which we call the incarnation, because God became physical or material in his flesh, we believe that we can use material things to be led to contemplate the God who is invisible. So it is not only okay, but necessary and beautiful to have images of God in our churches, to have murals and mosaics and paintings and windows that God has given us the techniques to use materials to reflect his beauty. It's just like it's okay to have photos in your home and necessary to have photos in your home that remind you of the people you love but can't always see or remind you of beautiful events in your past, remind you of those who have died, whom you miss, Remind you now of those who are quarantined or separated by the regulations on isolation. 
And the holy images in the church reflect events in the past. They don't just make up events that that never happened, or they don't just depict people who never existed. They depict events that really happened in the past, and people who really lived and did things that responded to God. God is the actor and central subject in every holy image or in every symbol, even if all you see is a saint or people depicted in the image. Because God the Spirit is the one who enters us and calls us and guides us and acts through us, who gives us permission to be like Christ, to reflect the image of God. Holy images reflect that God the Spirit not only became matter, but God also entered time and is the Lord of all space and the Lord of all time, the past, the present, and the future. I'm going to bring this introduction to a close. I've gone on long enough today, but I am now going to present a few pictures of our chapel in our priest's home, in the rectory. You can see a tabernacle. You can see an image of Mary. We have added a temporary altar to celebrate Mass because it hurts too much to be in the big church without you. And it's too cold. We had to turn on off the heat because we don't have any money coming in. You can see pictures of Saint Father Charles, not Saint Charles yet, but he's Father Charles. This is where we come to pray, to remember, so that we will have hope. Because when you remember, then you can have hope. That's the mission of the church, to be here to remind us so that we will have hope. But I ask you before I go to look at the holy images in your own homes. Do they need to be dusted off? Do they need to be moved to a central place or somewhere new in your home so that people can gather around them at this time when it isn't so easy to do that in our church, in our parish church? If you don't have any sacred art or images, maybe you could order them online and have them delivered. Later on, when it's possible, you can bring them to one of the priests and we'll bless them. At the least, you can go outside and collect materials to make a cross. And you can also light a candle or go buy one at the the supermarket the next time you're there. Maybe even you place candles in your little shrine And don't light them, but wait till Easter in case we can't gather for the Easter vigil this year. You and your loved ones could renew your baptismal vows and light the candle. Remember that Christ is the light and the darkness. If you have a creche that is boxed up, take it out. Show it. We must always contemplate and remember the incarnation that God became flesh. Is there any artwork that you have made yourself or that your children have made that leads you to reflect on the real but invisible God? So what I'm recommending is that you create a little shrine in your home, at least during this period. Decorate it in a way that reminds you that the kingdom of God is among us, that the kingdom of God is within you, And that even if we can't be united in physical ways right now, and even if we live in a time that is so divided, we will remember that we are united in the Holy Spirit. And I would also ask you and encourage you to add photos of your family and loved ones and place them in your shrine, your classmates, your best friends from school who you cannot be with right now, your fellow parishioners. If you had to leave university, put a picture of your school or your dorm room there. You may have pictures of your coworkers who you cannot physically work with right now and have to communicate through the internet. Maybe you have photos of your relatives and loved ones from other towns and countries, 
people that you really con rarely contact, people that you've fallen out with, but you miss. Maybe you have photos of events in the church, of the priest who baptized you, or pictures of your first Holy Communion or your wedding. Place those there around the holy images. Remember the one who said, the kingdom of God is among you. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Alpha and the Omega, the salvation of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I look forward to speaking to you tomorrow, and I encourage you and invite you to share this reflection uh, with your friends. It can be found on our St. Mary's Waltham Facebook page, which we just put up yesterday so we can communicate with you. Have a blessed day.